What's up everybody? Today we're going to be doing another episode of Leak Code Explained. Today's question is a medium question and it's container with most water. It's one of my favorite questions because it has kind of a fun solution and it's uh, it's like once you get it, it everything clicks. So um, I went ahead and copied down everything the Leak Code tells you and if I'm being honest, this question looks really confusing at first. Um, there's like a bunch of math, mathematical notation, and it can be kind of um, intimidating. But the key to these types of questions is to just break them down into terms that you know. So um, I'll just read through it. We're told that we're given n non-negative integers, a1, a2, to an, and where each represents a point at coordinate i, a, i, um, lines are drawn such that the two endpoints of line I is at I AI and I zero. Find two lines which together with X axis forms a container such that the container contains the most water. And we read that and we're like, what, what the hell? I'm like, what does that mean? Um, and so let's uh, start by drawing it out. On LeetCode, they give you a nice illustration that kind of makes everything make a lot more sense. But, um, so we can just start by drawing a XY plane. Alright, so now that we've gotten our graph drawn, let's start putting the points from the array onto our graph. And basically, each point in our array, each number at each index is going to be a column on our graph. And so what that means to us is like the first number at the zeroth index is one. And so at zero, we're gonna draw a line that goes up to one. And then similar to the first, uh, in the first index, in the number one index, um, we have eight. And so I'm gonna draw a line all the way up to eight. And I'm just gonna continue this until I run out of elements in the array. All right, so now that we've got the graph all drawn out, the first thing we're gonna do is create a start and an end. And we're also gonna make a variable called max to just keep track of the um, max area that we've seen so far. So what we're gonna do is basically, we're gonna have start be at zero and end be at the end of the array. And we're going to move whatever one is smaller to the middle. And so let's start doing that. Here, this is what our rectangle will look like. Now that we've got that, we're going to record the uh, area of this. And so it's gonna be eight minus zero times one, and we're gonna have eight. And that'll be the max area that we've seen so far because it's the first area that we've seen so far. And now start is smaller, so we're gonna go ahead and shift it to the middle, closer to the middle, and then have our rectangle now become this, but then we take the min of the heights and so that'll be our rectangle all right and this one is going to have an area of eight minus one so seven times seven which is 49 and uh it's greater than our last area and so it's our new max and basically we're going to keep doing this until start and end land on each other until they're uh, at the same spot in our array and so the next step from here would be to move end to the left one because it is smaller than where start is pointed. This one has an area of 18, which is less than our max, so we're not gonna update max. This one has an area of five times eight, which is 40, which is still less than our max, so we're not gonna update max. And basically this is gonna continue. I'll just fast forward through this part. And actually, our loop would never get here, where start is greater than end. We would never uh, measure that area because it doesn't make sense to, because it doesn't exist. And so um, now we would say that our max is equal to 49, and we would just go ahead and return that. All right, so let's start coding it. Remember that the first thing we need to do is say int max equal to zero, int start also equal to zero, and our end is going to be at the end of the array, which we can find by saying height dot length minus one because arrays are zero uh, indexed. Cool, and now let's start a while loop. 
Um, so if we remember back to the question, um, basically, if this is start and this is end, we're going to continue moving them closer to the middle until they're the exact same. And so we're going to say while start does not equal end, then we need to do stuff. And basically, we're going to say width is equal to end minus start. Int length is equal to the min of the two heights because we don't want the overflow. All right, now that we got that, we can calculate our area. And that's going to be length times width. Awesome. And now we can update our max by saying max is equal to math.max of max and the area that we just calculated. Cool. Um, and now we need to see which one is uh, has a smaller height. And so if this is start and this is end, then we know that we need to shift start towards the middle because it might have a really tall height if we move it. And so basically all we need to say is if height of start less than height of end. Then we got to shift it towards the middle by saying start plus plus. Else, then we need to shift um, end towards the middle, which we do by saying end minus minus. And now all we need to do is return max. And let's see how it works. Sweet. Uh, got a pretty good runtime. Um, let's talk about our time complexity and space complexity. So our time complexity, let's look at our while loop. Um, inside, we're doing constant time operations. Basically, that means like nothing inside our while loop is going to scale with the size of our array. And so we just need to know how many times is this while loop happening. And this while loop is happening basically n times because we're shifting it to each uh, index of n. And now let's talk about our space complexity. Our space complexity is going to be constant because we're not making any variables or any data structures that scale with respect to the size of the array that we're passed. All right, and so that's how you do the max area question on LeetCode. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, like and subscribe, and as always, have a good day.